The circular saw is a valuable servant to the woodworker, but it can be a dangerous enemy. It causes 50% of the accidents in the woodworking trade, many of them fatal. Like all machine tools, however, it relies on you for safe operation. The first and most obvious thing is to see that operators are properly taught. The Factories and Shops Act demands just that. Alternatively, an inexperienced operator must have competent supervision. Some safeguards are mechanical and obligatory. This machine lacks them. It is dangerous because the saw blade above and below the machine table is completely unguarded. So are the belts and pulley. And look at this. The machine stands on a wooden floor that's easily slippery. It's easy to fall, and in falling, you could come into contact with the blade. Look at the litter here. This kind of bad housekeeping simply asks for accidents. Keep your work area clear. A control switch away from the machine is often the cause of accidents. Stop-start controls should be where the operator can use them instantaneously. Here is a saw blade showing some common defects which cause accidents. See that crack? Look at that broken tooth, a very real source of trouble. Look at the gullets, which are square instead of rounded. Sawdust builds up, causing overheating. The teeth are incorrectly sharpened. The is attached to the riving knife and supported by it. It is loosely fitted. See how easily side movement occurs. That could bring the guard into contact with the saw blade. Now, if timber is being sawn higher than the saw projection allowable above the machine table, or if you are rabbiting or grooving, the knife and guard will have to be removed. That means danger. You can avoid the hazards by care and the use of proper safeguards. Now, let us consider the safe side. Regulations demand that circular saws be in good condition, and this one is. The teeth are sharp and correctly set. The gullets are rounded. There's no sign of a crack anywhere, and there are no teeth missing. These regulations require other things too. For example, a circular saw must be securely mounted and adjusted. It must operate without undue vibration. It must be stopped between jobs or when work is delayed or the machine left unattended. The installation must be securely bolted to adequate foundations to prevent movement of the machine. An operator can work freely without danger to himself and others when working areas and passageways are defined in this manner. Trade waste should be disposed of in a suitable container handy to the machine. The use of pallet boards for material before and after cutting helps in good housekeeping. Here is an ideal setup. A metal exhaust system for the removal of sawdust also completely guards the blade below the table. If there is no exhaust system, the saw blade below the bench must be enclosed by a guard like this to prevent accidental contact with the saw blade. Unguarded belts and pulleys can be dangerous, but when protected by a cover guard like this, the danger is eliminated. All circular saws must have suitable high-grade steel riving knives, and the top of the knife set slightly below the periphery of the saw. Here are the basic requirements. The knife and bracket are slotted to permit vertical and horizontal adjustments. The leading edge should follow the periphery of the saw teeth. It is tapered here to facilitate entering the saw cut and must be as close as possible, but not more than half an inch from the saw teeth. It must be the same thickness as the cut. A separate knife must be used for each gauge of saw. This prevents the timber from closing in on the uprunning saw blade and being thrown back at the operator. It also guards the hands of the tailor out from coming into contact with the saw. 
When you use a rise and fall table, the knife and adjustable bracket should be fitted to the main frame and not the table. They then remain in correct adjustment. This small circular saw bench has an arbor bearing assembly with riving knife and attachment mounted in a well-fitted bearing concentric with the arbor. The riving knife is attached by a three-way adjustment angle piece to this horizontal arm which has elongated slots. Irrespective of the setting of the saw, this drop arm causes the knife to maintain a constant relationship to the saw. This is a machine in good condition. The top is sound and level. Wooden bench tops must never be allowed to become worn. That applies to throat pieces or finger plates also. There should be only sufficient space for saw packing and free running of the blade. The control switch is right where the operator can shut off power instantly in emergency. This fence is stable and parallel to the saw blade. That's the way it should be. It can be adjusted easily. The front end of the fence must not project beyond the saw gullets when ripping. Overheating and black eyes come from badly positioned fences, which cause timber to bind on the saw blade. Here is a full hooded, manually operated guard. It extends two and a half inches beyond the front and back edges of the saw teeth. It has heavy gauge top plate and sheet metal sides. It is supported to twin arms bolted to heavy metal pillars. This similar guard is securely bolted to a slot for back and forward adjustment to saws of various size. There's a viewing opening for the operator to watch the cut. For narrow cutting, this hinged side gate allows the fence to be brought close to the blade. The setting lever raises or lowers the guard and locks it into the required position to allow a minimum clearance. On each side of the riving knife, there are anti-kickback devices. They restrict a backward thrust if a kick occurs but the guard must have only a minimum clearance. In this case, there is too much clearance and the kickback finger is not resting on the wood. See what happens. And this is what has happened more than once. A man is sawing timber with an unguarded saw. A workmate intent on his job arrives behind him just as a kickback occurs. The piece of timber leaving the bench with the speed of a bullet finds its mark. It penetrates the man's body. The tragedy of a situation like this is that one man's carelessness has cost another man's life. For normal ripping, the maximum amount of saw blade should always project above the machine table. Otherwise, the saw is not cutting the material downwards near the full periphery of the saw where it meets the table. But now, with the saw raised to a suitable height, the teeth cut into the timber downwards, making a clean cut without difficulty. Less pressure is required to feed the material, and there is less likelihood of a kickback. This is a self-adjusting double leaf guard. The front leaves are lifted by the timber and close as the trailing end passes through. This gives maximum protection. Two springs maintain control of the double leaf guard in this manner. When narrow cutting is required, the leaf on the fence side can be raised to bring the fence in close to the saw. Cam-shaped anti-kick devices attached to the supporting arm function each side of the riving knife to restrict backward thrust. When very wide materials are being sawn, the guard, where practicable, should be securely fixed to overhead supporting posts, well stayed to prevent movement. 
The quadrant and ball are installed overhead and attached to the guard and supporting member to raise and lower the guards. This variation is a full hooded counterbalance guard with an extended nose piece. supported by a fabricated steel frame and attached to the bench by twin pillars. Steel brackets welded to the guard prevent side movement. Watch how it lifts as timber is fed to the saw. It closes on completion of the cut. Lighting is obviously important. Whether fluorescent or incandescent, it should give adequate light and be high enough to avoid being struck by timber. Good light without deep shadows is essential for safe and comfortable working. Clothes are important too, so is position. This operator is standing where he should, to the left of the saw cut. He is clad in suitable short-sleeved overalls and his footwear is designed to stand the impact of heavy objects. Long lengths of timber require a tailor out to remove timber safely, otherwise the operator could be injured by a kickback. The operator also needs a push stick. With this, he can keep his hands away from the danger area. He can complete the cut and remove trade waste in safety. Spanners and appliances for fence and blade adjustments should be kept in suitable containers. They should be properly fitting tools and never left on machine tables. On a tilting arbor saw bench, the lower end of the bow frame is secured to the arbor bearing assembly and extends around and supports the adjustable hood guard, which moves in the same relationship as the saw. The riving knife and guard function independently. This allows rabbiting and deep cutting with the guards in the correct position. In whatever branch of the woodworking industry you are employed, follow the regulations which the Department of Labor and Industry has compiled for your safety. Circular saws are intended to saw timber, not men. Don't be sawed.